Take your Bibles with me, if you would, and turn to Luke chapter 1. In fact, just a month ago when we were preparing for Christmas, I ran across this passage as a Christmas message, but there was a part of it that spoke to me for the year 2022. Today I want to conclude our short series on what to expect, expecting the unexpected, as it were, for 2022. This morning, I want to speak on go for it. Go for it with all of your heart in 2022. In Luke chapter 1, let me begin by reading verse 26 and 27. The Bible says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. You know, if you're a student of history, and I love historical uh, stories that come out of times like World War II, but if you've read much about World War II, you remember that at the end of World War II, the Japanese government faced a problem, and that problem was that thousands of their soldiers were hiding in the jungles and in the mountains all through the South Pacific. And although the treaty had been signed with the United States and both parties had agreed to end the war, thousands of Japanese soldiers living in the mountains and the jungles of the South Pacific Islands wouldn't come out of hiding. They wouldn't surrender their weapons. They wouldn't return to their homes and live in peace. These soldiers had been indoctrinated with stories of what the Americans would do to them if they, if they gave up, if they surrendered. They believed that they would face torture, that they would face immediate death. So they remained hiding, and they remained in the fight as far as they were concerned. How could the Japanese government convince these diehard warriors that the, that the war was indeed over and that they weren't hearing American propaganda designed to capture them uh, as unexpected soldiers. Well, finally, the Japanese emperor made a speech, and he dealt with the end of the war, and he pled with these soldiers uh, throughout the South Pacific to return back home. The voice of the emperor was broadcast by radio and was recorded and played by loudspeakers into the jungles and the caves all over the South Pacific. Some waited to be certain that the war really had indeed ended. But within a few months, many of them began to surrender. After some years, it was assumed that those that were had been hiding during this time had gotten the message and were out and, and had already come home. Uh, if some of them still had not come home, they were presumed to be dead. But let me say this. In March of 1974, a Japanese soldier finally came out of hiding after 29 years uh, after the war had ended. And when he was asked why he remained so long in hiding, this warrior, now in his 60s, said that he had taken him that long to overcome the fears that he had. The U.S. And, the, and Japan had shared a very friendly relationship all of those 29 years after World War II. But this lone soldier wasted 29 years of his life hiding from the enemy because he still feared in his mind. In his mind, there was still great fear. Can you imagine being held captive by your fears for 29 years, imprisoned not by invading armies, but by a cruel dictator. And that dictator was the fear that you held in your mind that something was true that wasn't true at all. Folks, listen, many of us may have a hard time imagining what it would be like to live our lives filled with that kind of fear. But let me say, how many of us live with a different kind of fear? That's the fear of change. We often live in a different type of prison, one of our own making. It's a padded cell. It's called our comfort zone, our comfort zone. We all have our comfort zones. We may not even be conscious of what our comfort zone is. 
but uh, over the years we've developed habits and routines that feel safe within ourselves. And change threatens those comfort zones. It disrupts our routine. I struggle with this myself, constantly doing the same thing the same way. Folks, listen, comfort zones are prisons that prevent us from being free to dream God's dreams with Him. The fear of change and living within our comfort zone, playing it safe, following our standard operation procedures can be the greatest obstacle to fulfilling our God-given dream in 2022. All of us live with a comfort zone. We all resist change and doing something different in one way or another. For example, men, when you shave in the morning, which side do you start putting the shaving cream on? And where do you start the razor first, morning after morning? Ladies, what about your routine about fixing your hair in the morning? Which, uh, which fingernail do you paint first when you put on fingernail polish? Which ring do you put on first on your fingers? How about yesterday? How about the day before that? We probably follow the same routine year after year after year. And when you, when you drove to church this morning, how many of you have take, took the same route that you always drive uh, to church whenever you come and you've done that route for years and years and years. How often do you say, well, I'm going to take, I'm going to break my proverbial rut and I'm going to go a different way when I go to church. And, and you just, you just turn uh, left instead of right. How many of you have actually done that? When you sit down in your favorite restaurant, how often do you look at the menu? Uh, or do you just order the same thing you always order whenever you go to that restaurant? Are you sitting around the same people in the restaurant? How about in church? Still sitting around the same people you always sit around. Now, I want you to take a minute. I want you to look at a different spot in the auditorium. Move there if you like. Sit around people that you don't normally sit around. Talk to people that you don't normally talk to. One of the major barriers to success in 2022 is our reluctance to get out of our comfort zone. Just like that Japanese soldier who remained in hiding for 29 years, we would often rather face pain, the very pain of staying in the same risky rut that we've always been in rather than facing uncertainty, the uncertainty of change. So if you're going to succeed this year, then it may involve change. We won't see our dream become a reality just by chance. Folks, listen, they'll only be fulfilled. These dreams will only be fulfilled by making intentional changes to how we've been living. Our dreams will either set us free from the self-made prison of our comfort zone or our dreams will die behind the bars of our routine. If we're going to get out of our comfort zones and live out our God-given dreams, then we're going to have to go for it with all of our heart. We're going to have to take a look at the direction of our church. We're going to have to take a look at the direction of our personal witness, of our Bible study, of reading the scripture, of our time of prayer. We're going to have to take a look at our spiritual walk and our spiritual life. And I want us to look back to the very beginning of the story of Mary and, and the angel Gabriel coming to her to get some insight into what it means to step out of your comfort zone and to actually accomplish something for God by taking on a dream which God will place upon our heart. Long before Jesus would be nailed to the cross as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Mary had to be willing to step out of her comfort zone and she had to be willing to take on a God-given dream. I want you to notice first of all today that God's call to step out of your comfort zone will be unexpected. It will be unexpected. Folks, listen. Breaking free of our comfort zone means that we need to discover in the midst of our daily routine what God's will is for us and then to follow that direction whatever, wherever it may lead. God will change your plans. He's changed mine. He'll change yours. He'll establish a new agenda for you to follow. 
And in order to pursue a God-given dream, you have to be ready to make some changes. I want you to look with me at verse 26 and 27. We read it at the very beginning. Let's read it again. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God, it says, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, I'll be honest with you. Last time I checked, angels don't schedule an appointment with you. I've never received an email from an angel. They just show up unexpectedly. Now, I can hear some of you saying, thinking already, how often do angels drop in and deliver message from God anyway? Well, I admit that it's not often that an angel dresses up in white robes complete with wings and then shows up on my doorstep. But I also know this. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 says that some of us have entertained angels unaware. Now, we have to understand, I'm not promoting a theology that says that a glowing angel is going to show up when you're in trouble with a generic message that God loves you. That's not what I'm saying. God has a way of communicating to us that's even better than angelic messengers. God will speak to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said himself that when the Holy Spirit came, he will guide you in all truth. You see, folks, the Holy Spirit will use the Word of God. As you read the Word of God, as you meditate upon the Word of God, the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. The Holy Spirit will speak to your heart uh, personally. He brings those thoughts and ideas to your mind, showing you the direction and giving you the peace that you need to follow God's plan for your life. With practice, you'll know it's the voice of the Lord. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. See, the Holy Spirit also speaks to you through the thoughts of other people. The gifts of the Holy Spirit aren't limited. Just when you sit in church in a worship service, God will bring His truth in your life through family and friends and even strangers that you talk to uh, in your daily life. And the Holy Spirit also will speak to you through time spent in prayer. Listen, folks, prayer isn't just a time of bringing your laundry list to God with all of your requests and asking God like a genie to answer your request. No, prayer is intimate communication with our loving Heavenly Father. So expect the unexpected. Let God speak to you and lead you out of your comfort zone. The second thing I want you to see is as God leads you out of your comfort zone, not only will it be unexpected, but secondly, it's, it's from somebody who actually loves you. He actually loves you. You see, God instructed the angel Gabriel to first greet Mary with the reassurance that God loved her. I want you to remember what he said. Mary said, uh, the angel said to Mary, Mary, you have found favor with God. You found favor with God. Before Mary was challenged with the dream that she would one day give birth to the Messiah, she was first reassured that God was with her. I want you to do this great thing. But remember, God will be with you. And when Mary was chosen by the Lord for a special role, she was just a young girl. Many theologians feel she was only about 15 years of age and engaged to be married. And Mary had her whole life before with all the dreams and the expectations that every young bride has. God called Mary to step outside of her comfort zone, to be part of an even bigger dream than the dream she had of being married one day to Joseph. Remember, folks, this is the beginning of the story. Mary doesn't know how this plan will ever turn out. The baby Jesus hasn't even been conceived, let alone born in Bethlehem at all. God was sharing his dreams of a coming Messiah with an ordinary teenage girl in a small, insignificant village. If Mary were to be part of God's plan, then she faced the possibility of having her engagement with, with Joseph broken off. She knew that Joseph would have legal right to have her executed when it became known that Mary was pregnant. And even if somehow Joseph would still marry her, she knew how the people in that small town would talk and gossip. 
No, it wasn't an ideal situation. It wasn't ideal at all for this young Jewish girl to find herself in this particular predicament. But God called Mary out of her comfort zone in order to be part of his divine dream. Listen, in being part of this divine dream, Mary knew it would cost her something. It was going to cost her something. Mary was was willing to step out of her comfort zone because of one thing. And that one thing is Mary knew that God loved her. I'll step out of my comfort zone because I know God would never ask me to do anything that wouldn't be for my good and for His glory. Sometimes the challenge to do something risky and to step out of our comfort zone comes from those who don't really love us. Many of us have been dared by our friends or so-called friends to do things that are actually hurtful to us and not helpful. Many times we it's not even a verbal thing. Sometimes it's just to please the crowd. And we do them just to because we've been dared to do it by people who don't really care what the outcome will be. But God won't dare you to do something just for fun. That's not God. He won't pressure us into, into fitting into the crowd. God loves us. And He only wants the best for us in our lives. God isn't going to manipulate us. He isn't going to then laugh at us when we fall fat, flat on our face. When God challenges us to get out of our comfort zones and to be part of His dream for our lives, it's to enable us to become a person that God wants us to be. He, he, he's trying to cause us to be more like His Son. It will be uncomfortable. It'll be uncomfortable for this church. It'll be uncomfortable for your family. It'll be uncomfortable for you personally. It'll be uncomfortable. It will cost you something but it'll be worth everything it cost. God is setting us free from our self-made prisons to be all that He planned for us to be. I want you to remember what Jeremiah had to say. Jeremiah said, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. God called uh, to leave our comfort zone. And that call is sometimes unexpected. That call comes from someone who loves us dearly. But in the third place, when God calls you to step out of your comfort zone, it is for a godly purpose. Now, we can choose to pursue a lot of different goals in our life. We can pursue to go a lot of different directions. We can set our sights to accomplish great things. But unfortunately, many things that we, that we may run after have little or no eternal value at all. It's nothing more than just a puff of smoke. But when God calls us out of our comfort zone, it's to be a part of His divine daring dream, to be a part of something that will stand the test of the, of judgment when we stand before Him one day and give an account for our lives. God wants to fulfill His eternal purpose within our lives, but we have to be willing to get out of our comfort zones to see it happen. We're all familiar with the godly purpose of Mary being called, what she was being called to do. Mary was given a great dream. She was given the birth of Jesus to be the Son uh, of the Savior of the world. I want you to notice what verse 31 through verse 33 says in chapter 1. He says, And when thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. You see, the dream that God gave to Mary had everything to do with her playing a part in God's divine plan of salvation for the world. She had a special role, and that all... That, that could only be played by one person, the mother of the Messiah, the mother of our Savior. But let me say this, and don't miss it. Mary and all the characters of the Bible aren't the only ones that play a, play, a, a part in God's di- pl- divine plan of salvation. God has a divine script, a master plan for all of us, all of His people. 
God has called each one of us to play a part in that divine plan. He's chosen us to be part of that divine purpose to bring salvation to the world. God is building our church. God is establishing the kingdom through us. Through us, God is challenging every one of us to step out of our comfort zones in 2022 and participate in that divine God-given plan. Live His divine daring dream. Pursue His godly purpose for your life and for the life of Park Avenue Baptist Church. God calls us out of our comfort zone. He calls us and that call is going to be unexpected. That call comes from someone who loves you. That call is for a godly purpose. But I want you to notice in the fourth place, it will require a response. It will require a response. Let me begin in verse 26, the very beginning of this passage, and read all the way through verse 38. Notice, if you would, the requirement on Mary's part of responding to the call. God didn't force her. She had to submit. She had to surrender. The Bible says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the same, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary, this is the response, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power shall, be over, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, notice, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, this is her response, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. You see, Mary asked some legitimate questions. If she was going to become pregnant, she wanted to know how this was going to happen. How in the world would this occur? Mary didn't stop with those questions, though. Mary turned right around and said yes to God's will. When God challenges you to move beyond your comfort zone, and dream a God-given dream in 2022, it's all right to ask some questions. It's okay to say, God, that's a great dream, but how are we supposed to get there? How are we supposed to pay for that? How are we supposed to man that program? God answered Mary, and He'll answer you too. Now, folks, it's important to understand that God didn't give Mary all the details. Do you see that? Gabriel only gave Mary enough to help her to be willing to respond to God's will. God will give you and me just enough to light the path. You remember what the psalmist said in Psalm 119 and verse 105? He said, The word, thy word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Then Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, said in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, But the path of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. 
So when God gives you a new dream, it's like the dawning of a new day. Even though we can't see everything that lies in front of us, we have enough light to walk in the direction that God is leading us and to take it one step at a time. And each step we take, God will then light the next step. We may not have all the answers, but we have enough light to take the next step. God wants us to take that step to make that response to his call. Now, I'd like to tell you that those four points is all that that needs to be said, but it's not. I want you to remember what we've already learned. We've learned that God's call for us will be unexpected. God's will to come out of our comfort zone. That God's calling us out of our comfort zone comes from somebody who really loves us. God's call to step out of your comfort zone will have a godly purpose. He's not fooling with you. And we just learned that it will require you to make a response. You see, she was an individual who had to make a response, and so do you. I wish I could stop there. But there's a fifth thing that I must say from this story, and that is this. It'll also be painful. It will be painful. Mary, just like any other new mother was filled with all the dreams and the hopes of le- that lay before her with a newborn baby on the way. But she knew that Jesus was not going to be any ordinary child. Mary had given birth to the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Mary treasured the events of the very birth of Jesus. She treasured them, held them in her heart. But very soon she would learn the pain that came in leaving her comfort zone and giving birth to the Savior of the world eight days after Jesus was born. Just eight days after, Mary and Joseph took that infant to the temple. And while they were there in the temple, they were told about this special child from a man whose name was Simeon. In Luke chapter 2, verse 34 and 35, This is what Simeon told Mary and Joseph. He said, Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of of many hearts will be revealed. So along with the joy, of participating in God's divine plan, God also reveals that they, that Mary would experience pain. Pain came suddenly as King Herod tried to kill Mary's son. But God directed Joseph to take Mary and the baby and flee to Egypt away from Herod. This wasn't part of Mary's dream. Her child was born to be the Messiah, not to be a fugitive running for his life. In time, Mary and Joseph returned with Jesus, and they lived in Nazareth, you remember. She watched that child grow up, and as the years passed, she could see that this indeed was no ordinary child. The day came when her son, now a full-grown man, stepped out to follow God's plan for his life. And with authority, Jesus spoke to the crowd and he told that crowd, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And Mary watched as her son performed all these miracles, the blind could see, the deaf could hear, the lame could walk again, and even the dead raised to new life. The promise made by the That angel that day, some 30 years before this, showed itself in her son, Jesus Christ. That was God's plan. But imagine the pride that that filled Mary's heart as Jesus and the crowd marched into Jerusalem before the crucifixion and all the crowd threw, threw branches before him as a conquering king coming in and shouting, Matthew chapter 21, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. No doubt Mary was so proud that that was her boy. That was her son. That was what she said yes to God about. Unfortunately, though, 
Mary's joy will often very quickly turn to great sorrow because five days later, just five days later, those that had stood along the road and hailed Him as God's Son, as the Messiah to Israel, stood there before Him and shouted, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Just five days later. And Mary wept on that same day at the foot of the cross where her son hung nailed by his hands and his feet. His flesh ripped open and bleeding, listening to him speak, watching him in torture and torment. Her son Jesus, the promised Messiah, was being put to death and there was nothing, nothing that she could do to save his life. Think of it as a mother would. Not even Mary understood that the Messiah would have to suffer and die. It was only after Jesus had died would he then, would he then rally to life and give victory. Mary didn't understand the pain that was going to come before the victory. Folks, if you're indeed a God, been given a God-given dream, if this church indeed has a God-given purpose, then our, then we have to be assured that it's not going to come without pain. It's not going to come without sacrifice. Folks, I want you to understand. I want you to understand that those things in life that are most rewarding will also cost us the most. But folks, it will be worth the pain. It will be worth the pain. God doesn't want you to remain locked in a self-made prison of comfort. God wants to see us break free from our comfort zone and pursue the God-given dream that He lays before us. God's ultimate dream for each and every one of us is that we will all be transformed into the image of His dear Son, Jesus Christ. I love what Paul said. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live I live by the flesh I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me now listen crucifixion is still painful it's still painful However, when we lay our lives down, we then receive the blessing of the resurrected power living in us, living in our family, living in our church. Mary must have gulped when the angel announced that, he would, that she would give birth to the Messiah. Still, she said, God, I'm willing to accept whatever you want. Not many Christians are like Mary and moving beyond their comfort zone. Instead of trusting God and saying, I'm open to whatever you want, God. Many times we're very quick to say, oh, I can't do that. I can't go there. I can't speak to that person. The internal voice blurts out. I can't learn another language and go to the mission field. I can't overcome that temptation. I've, had, I've done it too long. I can't go back to school and learn. I'm too old. I can't make new friends. I can't change jobs. I can't, I can't uh, uh, handle my marriage any longer. Too many can'ts aren't real. They just aren't. We put all kinds of restrictions on God's challenge for us. We unconsciously say, well, be aware that I won't say yes, Jesus. If you, if you, if doing requires my time, my energy, my money, my change, change in my life, then you might as well find somebody else. We don't trust God. We just don't trust Him to have our best interest at heart when it comes to an assignment that He might send our way. Going for God's best in 2022 involves opening yourself to fear. Yes, you might experience some surprise and some delight because suddenly you realize that God has acted in such a wonderful way and He takes your breath away. Realizing that saying yes to God this year has changed the world for you. The writer of Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 and verse 3, 
the writer says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Next week, we're going to begin a brand new series on the parables of Jesus, the teachings of this one who said yes to God and followed the Lord even to the cross. Shall we stand?